Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banner. In this episode, I'm going to be working on the cab, putting all the details on, and I'm going to get the cab finished all the way through to the satin varnish. Now, um, I, I've been looking at my videos, um, not watching them, but looking at the responses to them and the questions that have been asked, and it seems that I'm leaving steps out of the video that people are asking about. So in this one, I want to try to uh, reevaluate how I do the videos so that I can show everything. Now that means the videos are going to run long, although they've all been running pretty long, but um, at least maybe it'll answer those questions that you might have and um, make, the, make it more complete with, uh, uh, you know, showing the builds and, and things like that. So without prolonging this introduction, let's get right into it because I'm making really good progress. It's going fast and I, I really want to get this um, model done quickly. Okay, now, the first thing I'm going to, do, going to do is put the weld seam back in between the number boards and the cab roof. According to my notes, when I got up on top of a GP35 a few years ago, that joint is one and a half inches. So I need to cut a piece of 5,000 styrene one and a half inches wide. Um, before I do any cutting, I clean up the edges. I'll, I'll slice the edge so it's nice and straight. Then I'll come with a uh, sanding stick and I'll just clean off anything that may have um, peeled up or, or mushroomed or anything like that. So I'll just go over it and clean it up like that. And then I'll just go right down the, the edge and clean it up so it's nice and clean. So I got nothing interfering on the edges or on the top. Everything's nice and true there for a straight line. Now to cut that one and a half inch uh, wide piece of styrene, I use my vise. And a very long time ago, I made a bunch of blocks, brass blocks, that are the same height as the vise. And I cut into them different lengths. And I don't know if you let me zoom in on this. Hopefully you can see it. Let me zoom in to about, yeah, I think you can see that. Okay. I think you can see right here I have scribed 1.5 inches and down here is 2 inches. So, it looks, so, if you look here, you'll see a cut line right there. And you'll see a cut line right there. And that goes all the way across. So from the top of this block to that edge is a scale one and a half inches. And then likewise from this side of the block to that edge is a scale two inches. Since I'm cutting 5,000 styrene, I want to be able to clamp this in a vise, so I can't cut in five thousandths, so I cut in half of that. I cut in two and a half thousandths. Then what I do is I set that block into here so this will be the cutting edge right there because this has the v-shape in it i'm sorry let me zoom out a little bit so i can stay on camera here so this is the cutting edge where the one and a half inch this is has the v-shape in it for round parts so i won't use that as a cutting edge so i'll put this one and a half inch side over here next i'll go in and i'll just cut it cut this just a little bit wider or not a little bit, but wider than what I need. And you don't want to cut it in one pass. Take a couple of passes. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to clean up that edge. Turn it over. And I try to clean up the, the long edge a little bit. It's not gonna not really gonna get there, but yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. It looks fine. But I did clean up the sides. Now it doesn't matter which side you put in because both sides are straight. Now because this is five thousandths, 
it takes a little bit of work to get this to nestle down in there because it's such a thin gripping point just got to make sure it's there on both sides okay and okay all right so that's down up against the ledge now what I'll do is I'll tighten this down really good there we go and now it's nice and nice and tight in there then I will cut these edges off because I don't need them to flex while I'm cutting all right now I've got a new blade in the knife and I'm just going to start slicing. I don't want to do it all in one shot because if you do big, big sections, you're going to stretch the plastic. And then you'll cut too much off. You can also use a nice fresh razor blade for this, something like, you can also use something like that for this. Okay, now that I've got it really close to the top surface, I can go ahead and slice it all the way down. Just run the knife right along. Just like that. You know, I'll just go in sand it just a little bit and we have our one and a half inch there we go we got our one and a half inch um, weld joint or overlap joint so we're going to take that we're going to lay it in here now it's it's slightly curved because it's so narrow and due to the stressing of the cutting and all that it uh, kind of causes it to uh, bow out so I'm going to again sand it don't put too much pressure on it you'll rip it So now it's ready to be installed. So we're going to take that. And I'm going to stick it right on the front edge of the roof. And I'm going to just tack it in place with some MEK. Tack it there. And I'm going to tack it at this end. Just like that. Now I'll take a straight edge. 
and I'm going to put it right across the back so that it's even with the face of the cab. Like that. And put some MEK right on the front. Okay, so I can take that off and do MEK on the back edge. Uh, now what I'm referring to MEK is this Tamiya extra thin cement in the uh, lime green bottle. So that takes care of that. Just making sure everything's straight. And now I will just cut this side off. Now I'm going to let that set up and then I'll trim these I'll trim these corners here and here. So when I I'll let this set up for a little bit, come back and trim these corners and we'll do the weld beads going forward in the center. Okay. Now I'll just go ahead and trim off this corner. And that takes care of that weld overlap. Now we got to cut the center of this weld overlap off because you see these lines that I drew on here? That's where the uh, flat stops, where the angle comes in, and then you got this flat area where the horn goes in right here. Well, this section between these two lines, the overlap joint is two inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right on that line. And right on that line, I'm going to take that section out. Okay, and then what I need to do before I put the new section in is I want to scribe a very fine line right over those that penciled mark. So I'll lay my scribe. I'm sorry if you can't see this, but I'll explain it. So I lay the scribe right on top of the line I'll bring my straight edge up to it and then I'll cut very shallow scribe in it. So there's one. And that's just going to be a guide for laying in the weld bead. There we go. Now I just go over that a little bit with a sanding stick. Clean off the tops of it. Come back in and clean out the scribe. And there we go. Now we're going to do the same thing for making this two inch weld overlap joint. 
come over here. I'm going to cut this. Like that. Clean it up. And now I'm going to turn the block around because it's got the two inch side. Oops. There we go. Alright, now I can, let me just get this edge, and now I can slice it down. Give it a little bit of a sanding. And clean up. Now the reason I'm so careful at picking this up because I don't want to kink it when I pick it up. Alright, so let me cut one side square. And let me get my smaller. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that edge is square. Now I need to lay this up there and cut the width of it. Alright, now I just need to lay that in there.
so that the back edge is even with the back edge of the one and a half inch line or one and a half inch weld overlap. And there we have it. So I've got that in there. Now earlier I stretched some sprue, measured it out. It's about eight thousandths in diameter. I didn't I was gonna use ten thousandths, um, but it's just a little too thick looking because this is a really, really small weld. But I want it to be visible. So, where did I put it? There we go. So what I'll do is I'll cut that in half. Okay. Put that piece up there. Take this piece. And we're going to lay it right over where the scribed line is. And we're going to just tack it in so that we can move it around. You want it to follow that scribe line. So nip it off at the front. And then load it down with some cement. And then I want to make sure it's straight. Just like that. Now we'll go do the other one the same way. Make sure it's lined up. Load it down with some cement. Trim it off at the front. And make sure it's straight. And there we have the uh, weld lines on the cab roof. At this point in the uh, GP35 phases, I think it's the phase 1B3 actually, this center joint disappears. So we've got that, I'm going to let that cure. I need to locate the hole for the horn and it, according to the photograph that I have, um, the GP35 I was on top of was, um, had the horn removed. So the hole sits back right, right about there. 
I'll center it, drill the hole, and then that'll be the last thing that I need to do for drilling. So now with this done, because the horn's not going to get glued on until after it's painted, because I like to be able to get a nice coat of paint under where the horn is, and I like to be able to move the horn around while I'm painting it so I can get all sides. So next up, I will get the, uh, the hole drilled, and then I'll get the uh, antenna on, and then I'll get the door handles on and from that point it's time to paint the cab interior actually grit blast everything and then paint put a coat of primer all over the cab and uh, start working and getting this thing finished okay so I've got the hole drilled for the horn now a little tip on when you put your horns in when you use these brass horns after you drill your hole Champ for the top of the hole just a little bit because all of these castings where the pin meets the bracket, there's a slight, a very slight um, fillet in there. So if you champ for the top of your hole, then your horn will seat down into the um, hole nicely and completely with the bottom of the bracket up against the top of the hood without it sticking up just a little bit. So that takes care of the horn. It's all cleaned up and everything and it'll it'll just set into that hole. And when it's all all done and everything, I'll glue it in after it's all painted and stuff. I explained why in the previous session. So next up, we've got to put in the antenna. So the, I I cleaned the antenna up while it was on the uh, on the sprue. So we're going to stick that in there. Now if you'll notice, there's a little line that I drew that's parallel to the sides and all the way forward. That's to make sure that I put the, the uh, antenna on in the right orientation. Make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to take some uh, top glued on. Take some CA. There we go. Take some CA, a little dot there, and get it on this and hold this down so it doesn't move while I put the I mean, I moved it right there, but there we go. Ugh. I can't get this thing to, the glue to flow underneath it. There we go. There we go. Now I can get it glued in all the way around. All right, when that dries, I'll come back with a sharp knife and just scrape around and scrape all the glue off. So I got the, the, uh, Antenna glued on, now we got to put the door handles on. Let me get some glue out here. I'll be using this Tamiya Extra Thin, and then I'll back it up with some CA. So these are precision scale cab door handles. This, these tweezers have some stickiness to them. And I think that's due to when I do soldering and stuff, some of the, uh, hmm, almost lost my door handle. Some of the, um, uh, what do you call that, the flux sticks to it. There we go, now it's releasing. Now to put these door handles on, there's a little tab right in the upper left corner. That goes right on the left side of the seam. 
and it's still sticking. There we go. Now I use some thin cement, it'll stick it down and then I can position it better. There we go. And if you want to test where your door handle needs to go, just put the cab on the model and push the door handle up against the side of the nose. There we go. That takes care of that. Now I'll just back it up with a little bit of CA. Like that. And we'll go do the rear door handle. Put some glue on there. Put it on the shell. Push it up against the shell. And now we've got the door handles in. Now I can just back it up with some CA. Like that. Now I can go back and scrape the CA off the roof. And all I want to do is see the clear CA coming off and not the yellow of the cab of the plastic. Like that, and we'll take some water. And we'll carefully sand. There we go. Now let me just get around the door handles. And let me stick my finger in the CA. 
I have a habit of doing silly things like that. I have a very bad habit of not paying attention to where I'm at, pushing parts around and breaking parts off and beating myself in the head for it. Like I just almost broke the antenna off, not thinking where my finger was. Alright, just get the back handle done. Alright, I'm going to glue my fingernail to my skin. <laughs> okay, so that takes care of the parts that need to be glued on right now. Now I can go and grit blast this. Grit blast the number boards, grit blast the, uh, the uh, actually I need to cut the tab away from these windshield wipers. There we go. Now I can grit blast those windshield wipers and get those painted so that they'll look like they'll look like these ones. I need to grit blast the horn so I can get it painted. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let me go get this all grit blasted, not these ones, but get this all grit blasted here. And oh we forgot an important part. Let's put that on right now. See, who's this? people? You aren't. You're not reminding me of what I need to do. Like I don't know whose job it was to remind me to put the train line hoses on, but you forgot to tell me to do that. So I've got to put these on as well. But those are easy. They don't get painted green, so I'm not worried about those. Those can go on at any time. But whoever was, whose ever job it was to remind me to put those on, you're fired. Sorry, you're just fired. Okay, let's get this going. So these are the visored um, headlights, housings, and there is a little bit of flash on them. So I'm going to clean that up. Okay, that is pretty good. Okay, so now let me cut off one of these. Alright. Now I just got to clean it up.
Now I cut that pin off because if I try to cut off the whole sprue piece, that pin is going to force my cutters down into the part. So now I can get a good straight cut off the top of that part. Now on the back, there are two pins on each side. Those need to come off. Then do a little bit of cleanup. Light sanding. That light sanding will take off any surface tension so when the uh, put the glue on there it flows. Now these holes aren't exactly the same as these holes but they're very very close. So close that it's almost perfect. So what I do is I try to center it and it's sticking to the tweezers again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue on there and that will be stronger than the tweezers I hope. Not that much. I need a bit more on there. Just uh, lining it up, making sure it's straight. Put some glue under there. I want to get a good seal, maybe a little bit of an ooze. Alright, good. Let me get it from the inside. Alright, that's good. There's a little bit of ooze, but once all this sets up and the plastic hardens again, I can scrape that off. Okay. So that should now be sealed on there very, very good. 
Make sure it's straight up and down. You got to look at it from all angles. All right. Enough playing around with it. We'll just let that dry and then I'll come back and clean up all the ooze. Then it's time to grit blast everything and get a coat of primer gray on it. Now the primer that I'll be using is again the Tamiya XF80. And uh, I'll also use that as the cab interior color because it's really, really good, I think, for uh, EMD suede gray. I don't know if the, the um, Pennsylvania cabs are painted gray or beige on the inside. I'm just going with gray. I'm not worried about it. So that takes care of the cab. Next time you see it, it'll be in, in uh, primer gray. All right, so I've got the cab painted. I've got the interior painted and a gloss coat on it. <clears throat> I have the lights painted and so this will match the interior as well as the wire. I've got the wire painted as well. Um, let me see, we got the uh, windshield wipers painted. So I painted those uh, airframe aluminum and I went and repainted this airframe aluminum also so that they would match. And I've got the number boards painted black with a clear coat on them. Um, now it's time to paint the, oh and I've got the horn in a primer gray also. <clears throat> now it's time to get everything ready to paint the cab in the uh, Brunswick green. So All right, so the cab is painted. I've got the number boards in and it's got a clear coat over everything. I just went ahead and painted the whole inside of the window black um, as you can see in here. I mean I don't know if you can really see that but it's done. After I painted it black I went back and I put another clear coat over it so this is the windows or the window gaskets now are all ready for um, uh, decals and again I'm not ready so just a second I had these decals made uh, quite a few years ago, I think back in the early 2000s at, uh, at uh, Rail Graphics, and this is what they look like. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. And what I do is I cut them into four pieces, I cut up close to the black line, and then I just do the window gaskets in four separate pieces. And it actually works out really well. So now. I just need to put the gaskets on, put a clear coat over the gaskets, and then get the real windows in, leaving the um, masking on the windows because I don't want to spray the windows with um, uh, uh, satin varnish. So I'm going to go ahead and get these on. Everybody knows how to put decals on. Like I said, I cut up really close to these edges, leaving just a little bit of film, and then I put them over the uh, the um, gaskets here on the cab. Use some Solvacet, let them settle down in. Um, once they've dried good, I'll give it a light coat of um, uh, clear and uh, the cab will be ready for final assembly. All right, before I get over and, and decal the hook or uh, the cab, I just want to explain one quick thing about the um, the hood, or I'm sorry, the window gaskets. On units that are built and painted by EMD, like new units, the window gaskets are black. On units that are shopped typically by um, the railroad in their own locomotive shops and painted by, uh, um, uh, in their shops and such, usually they just mask the window and then the gasket is painted the same color as the, uh, uh, the rest of the, or whatever's around it. Um, so that takes care of, you know, the explanation of that. Um, real quick on this, I've got the train line um, hose on here and also on the back so that that completes the the um, sill unit. I also changed the bell 
and made it into a bronze bell because somebody posted a photo on the Atlas Rescue Forum, a uh, builder's photo of the of a Pennsylvania GP35, and the bell was bronze. So you'll see right in here, I've got a, I don't know if you can really see that, but I've got a bronze bell located in there. Let me zoom in a little bit. You get that in focus. There we go. Now you can see the bronze bell up in there. And all I did with that is I grit blasted a cotto bell and then put a clear coat over it and then a satin varnish and then just reinstalled it. Alright folks, um, I'm just about done with decaling the uh, gaskets on the window. I've got one more window to do. And I thought I'd show you um, how much work it is to do these windows. It's not just slap the decals down, but as you can see, I don't know if you can really see it. Maybe you can. The uh, black around the uh, the window gaskets. That's all on the face. Is all a decal painted on the inside. So I've got one more to do, and I had to test the first to see if the decals break apart. Some of them have been breaking, but. I've been pretty pretty lucky on some of them, on most of them. So anyway, I've got two decal types. The larger decals with the, the longer short leg, these are for the uh, cab face windows and the rear windows. The, the ones with the short, short leg, those are for number boards. So I've got those and I've also done um, class lights. So these are the class lights for, um, I think these ones for, for um, Atlas units and these ones are for Kato units, a little bit thicker. So anyway, let's do this last window together. So let me grab a decal out of here. I've got them floating in the water here. Let me see if I can grab one. So much surface tension on the water. There we go. Okay, so there is one decal. So I'm going to do that corner. Now the way you work these, or the way that I work these decals, is I put it right on center, right on center with the uh, gasket, molded on gasket. Sometimes if there's a little too much water on there, I will wick it off and it's it took the decal off of where I needed it But that's okay. The thing about these decals is when I hit them with Solvacet They do not soften quickly so I have time to manipulate them Okay, so I got that one on And I'll hit it with Solvacet And then I'll come back and put it in place. Now these are hard to see because it's black. Black on a dark surface and then you put Solvacet on it and it glares. So I need to look at it in a darker, light, a darker shadow. Okay, so I'm going to let that one set a little bit, and this is not a case, I'm going to put this one on, up here, this is not a case where you can just put the solver set on and it does its job. This you have to continually, is that that's not the right one. I can never pick up the right one. What the hell? Okay, I need this one. There we go. So I need that one. dry it off a little bit 
put that on there. Get some solver set. Just getting it positioned just right. Okay, now, if you'll notice, this one down here, the solver set has already dried on it, but it hasn't folded over at all. <coughs> so I'm going to get some more solver set and I'm going to start working it. Let that soften it some more. Okay, it's starting to fold. this one over. I'm going to dry off my brush a little bit because there's still a lot of solver set on there. And I'm going to wick it away and start pushing the decal into the gasket. It hasn't folded on the bottom yet. There's going to come a point when this decal is going to finally succumb to the uh, solva set, but it hasn't done that yet.
This one up here is folded. And this one finally has folded as well. Okay, now we'll do the other ones. So we'll do this corner. Solve the set. That looks pretty good right there. And we'll do the other corner. That looks pretty good there. That's too much solvacet. Now, if you ever have solvacet on your brush and you do this to dry it off, make sure those fingers are dry before you touch your model again because you will melt fingerprints into the clear coat. What I'll do some, a lot of times is I'll rinse my brush off in the water again and then do that and wash my fingers off with the water. But make sure your fingers are dry, or you will, I guarantee you, you will melt your fingerprints into the model.
wicking out some of the solver set. The decal has already started folding over once I wicked it away. Get some more solva set, just a little bit. Start working on this side. Rinse the brush off, and we'll go back and do wicking it off again. I'm going to take one more brush with Solva set on it and just go around it. And that's it. Just let that dry and it's done. So all of the uh, gaskets on the windows are done. Got the gaskets on the number boards and on the front windows. So now I'm going to let that sit overnight and really cure good and let the, all of the moisture dry out of it. And then I'll come back with a very light coat of clear varnish. And then it's ready for the windows to go in. Alright, so the cab. I got this piece of tape here so I know where the center of the screen is. So I can work over that. So got a little bit smarter on that one. Anyway, so I've got the uh, cab numbers on. And I'm just letting the solva set uh, set up on it and dry. And once that's done, I'll put a very light clear coat over those, and the cab's ready to be assembled. But while that's dr while the solva set's drying, I'm doing these wind deflectors. So I've got they're going to be in the folded position. So I've got them bent over. I got the arms bent over. <clears throat> and I just have one more to do here. So. Let me see, I don't know if I can zoom in on this anymore. No. You can barely see that, I understand. But what I'm going to do, is we're going to put it in these pliers. I think I need to zoom out because it'll get blurry. 
So I'm going to put it in these pliers and you want to make sure that both long portions or long arms of this uh, wind deflector are in the pliers because when you bend it you're going to and they're not in the pliers you're going to bend or deform that leg. So I just stick them in the pliers like that bend it over make sure that leg is perpendicular to the frame and then do the other one And that takes care of bending those legs. Now, we're going to use some micro scale crystal clear. This is a really old bottle, but it still, still seems to work. I think I've had this bottle since the 90s. I don't remember. I want to clean off my CA applicator. This thing here is just a kneaded eraser and what it will do is when I put the uh, when I put the crystal clear on I need somewhere for it to dry it without touching anything so I'll just set it into that and let it dry. <clears throat> Alright so we all pretty much know how to use crystal clear. Mine is pretty starting to dry up in there a bit there we go so it's still still not too bad see how it is I need to be able to get a good glob of it there we go grab it in this hand and then if I could hold it right it always seems to happen somehow I I release it and then we just want to go around the inside I'm gonna need more of this stuff because there's not enough on here to get it to, to get it to stretch out Nope. Nope. Let me just put a little bit on my table here. There we go. There we go. So that one's taken care of, and what I like to try to do is set it straight up, well, actually no, set it horizontal, I'm going to keep it from touching. Right like that. Let that dry. And then we'll do another one. I'm afraid to squeeze these tweezers too tight cause the part to go flinging across the room.
there we go that one got done quickly and it's a little bit less well there you go dropping things again let me use these tweezers there we go let's do the next one got to make sure the tweezers aren't in the way and wipe this excess off here this old stuff off There's another one. There we go. And now we will do the last one. Come on, come, there we go. And we got all four of them done now. Now I just got to let those set up. There we go. Just let those set up. And when that cures, I can install them on the cab. So right now, what I can do is I can set these aside. And I can wipe that up in a minute. And I can, I'll install the, um, the horn. And then I just got to wait to put a clear coat on the side of the decals. Put the windows in and put the put the light housing or the lights in um, after I put a satin varnish on it I'll put the windshield wipers on and by that time the wind deflector should be ready to go on okay so I'm putting the windows in I've got the front windows in and I've got the one back window in and so I just wanted to give you a little heads up on on these when you paint your cab before you put your windows in you're going to add some thickness or actually reduce the window opening. It's a very, very small reduction and it's really not that much, but it's enough that can, it can affect the windows going in. So just a quick note on what, you, what I do to make sure everything fits properly. The burnt side, you see all these burn marks, is the outside. It's the outside face of the cab. The clean side is the inside face of the cab. <clears throat> so because there's a, there's a draft angle on your windows and there's a draft angle because of the way the laser cuts um, on, the <clears throat> on the window side. So um, on, the, on the outside surface, this burn surface, you'll have a thin line. On the inside surface, you'll have a much wider line because as the thicker the material, the more the laser will spread out as it's going down. So this is your outside. So when you cut these, you're going to cut, there's one line or one attachment point. You cut those off and you need to clean that little tab off. But that's not enough. All, if you look real close at these, you're not going to see it in the video, but in, if you have these and you look real close, there are 
vertical lines from the laser cutting all the way around. And if you weren't painting your cab, these windows would fit in perfectly. But since we paint our cabs, um, you have to paint the inside of the window edge before you put your windows in. So I, and you want, if you're going to scrape these, you want to make sure you scrape at the same angle as the uh, draft angle on them. You don't want to straighten these window sides out, otherwise you're going to get a big gap on the outside of your window. So I'm scraping these just a little bit. Not much, you can see I'm not really taking off a whole lot there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sanding stick and I'm going to again sand at the same draft angle. And all I'm doing is removing that those vertical lines or the lines that go you know front to back making sure I sanding at the same angle now I'm wearing these gloves because this is the hand that handles a cab and I don't want to get fingerprints all over it from after I did the clear coat the clear coat usually takes about six hours to fully cure. You can handle it within just a few minutes afterwards. So now I'm going to do the, the curvatures of the corners just a little bit. You don't want to ruin that fit. I'm really not taking off a whole lot. keeping at the same draft angle and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the inside of the cab corner and just barely bevel it just a little bit what I'm doing here is breaking any sharp edge that's going to bite into the paint and chip the paint off There we go. Clean off my hands here. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it into the window. And when I push it in, I don't want any edges to bite into the paint. You want to feel or hear a creaking sound. You don't want to hear a cracking sound. The crack is a paint coming off. So if I carefully push it in, I feel a creaking sound. Or I feel a creak and not a crack. Okay, then I'm going to take a piece of styrene block and I'm going to set it up inside the window here and take a screwdriver and just press it in and that went in a little too far but that's okay and we do the same for the top edge there we go now if I look inside the cab you want the back of the window flush with the inside of the cab the bottom is good these top corners a little out and that's the window the window is in uh, no paint chipped off because I didn't see any paint getting pushed out on the inside of the cab so I've got a nice press fit I don't need to glue it in and everything's good now I'm gonna leave the tape on there and I'm gonna put a clear um, satin varnish over all of this but before I do that 
I will glue the horn in. I should make sure the horn fits properly. So the horn will get glued in like that. There we go. So basically this cab is almost done. Um, on the wind deflectors, three of them, two or three of them I've had to redo because there was bubbles on the inside. This one I have to redo because I've got a, an ugly bubble area down here and a big bubble up there. So I'll redo that when it comes once you have to, you have to let it dry before you redo them. And then you just take a, um, an exacto knife, you stab in there and just peel it out. And it'll all come right out clean like that and then uh, I can redo that one. okay the cab is almost done so we've got the windows in got the windshield wipers on we got the horn on and all that's left is to put the side windows in <coughs> and the wind deflectors on but I'll put the wind deflectors on after I put the side windows in now since we're not using these back windows to the cab and I'm not using the A and B side windows, I want it to snap into the sub base like Kato had designed it to. So what I'll do is I'll simply take a saw, let me zoom out a bit, there we go, and I'm just going to cut these back windows off. They don't have to be perfect, but See if we can get this cut now. I got a nice line going there. There we go. Now I'll just clean that up. Let me clean up this tab in the front here. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to take this. This is the back. Get some of this stuff out of the way. I've got the light in already. And this should just snap in just like that there we go now I can snap that into the sub base and lock it down like it's supposed to be now the next step so we got the lights in um, the next step will be to put on the the wind deflectors, and then I just have to build the um, the uh, the lenses for the light, and that's very easy. I don't know if I have them out yet. I think I do. Let me see. No, no. Up oh, there we go. I'll be using these 1709s Detail Associates, and I'll be using the ones with the pins on them, not just the the bezel, but I'll use the ones with the pins on them, and I'll be cutting the pins down just enough 
to go right up against the uh, LED. And I'll have to slightly um, uh, sand the um, outside circular portion down just to fit properly into the, uh, into the light housing. Okay, so the cab is done. And in putting on the um, satin varnish to the cab, I also put the satin varnish on the uh, sill unit and the sub base, so everything's matching now. So the window's in, the cab's, uh, the lights are in, the cab is all done. I got the wind deflectors on the sides and stuff. So I've got the lights wired up to test them. I've already tested them. They work great. And I'll put it on the track real quick and show you guys. Um, what I'm going to have to do, I didn't take an account that when the shell comes off I need longer wires here so I'm going to get myself some small diameter t uh, shrink tube or, uh, for the wires and add another three or four inches onto these wires. I made these three inches, they need to be at least six inches so that when I take the shell off there's plenty of wire to come out and let the shell lay on its side. So let me go ahead and get the camera set up looking down the line and uh, put this on and we'll see what the lights look like. Okay, so it's all programmed in there, everything's working, and I'll turn the lights on now. So I think they look pretty good. When you look straight on on them, right now you don't see it at that end. Well, maybe you do. Let me see. Yeah, um, the lights are pretty bright. I think they work out just right. Let's turn the lights off in the room and see what it looks like. So I think they I think they work out well. Well the cab is done and I can move on to the hood. Um, as far as putting the lights in, I couldn't really show it on camera because everything was so tiny and it would my fingers would have just been in the way, but but real quick, you saw that I used the 1709s from Details Associates. I used the one with uh, out of the package with the little pin on the back. I had to cut off approximately 60 thousandths off the back of that pin, maybe 80 thousandths. But I trimmed it to fit till it backed up against the uh, LED. Um, where the circular part, the lens portion of it, there's a very slight bevel in the back of that um, uh, lens. So I had to sand that slightly to get it to fit up snug against the light housing. Um, to do that, I, I put it into a pin vise, tightened the pin vise, pin vise down around the pin, and then I lightly sanded the bevel on the back of the um, lens. Um, once I got that to fit in um, and seat properly, I then put, um, I took some canopy cement and I uh, thinned it with a little bit of water and then I used a very fine paintbrush and painted around the around the bezel um, or the lens where it contacted the um, the light housing and if there was a little too much I cleaned off my brush and I just wicked away what I didn't want and it'll set in that um, recess real nicely. For the lower light lens I had to sand off a little bit of the bottom of the um, the lens, because of the, the light visor, wouldn't allow the lens to fully seat. So I sanded a little tiny bit off the bottom of the lens and then it seated, it seated very nicely. And then I did the same with the canopy cement. So, so that takes care of the cab and now I can move on to the hood. I hope you enjoyed this little um, series and um, you know I, sh I tried to show everything that I did to it. So hopefully, um, if you have, or anyways, if you have any questions, of course, just put them in the comments sections and I'll answer them. Um, if, I, if I have the answer to them, of course, I'll answer them, and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate your time, and um, I hope you'll join me on finishing this model by working on the hood.